good morning, another year over and a new one just begun. But who decided this is where the year began? This is Lorena, and in today's Friday Facts and Fun, we will be sharing about calendars and timekeeping around the world that are interesting and good to know. As we all know, there are a lot of calendars around the world. We have the Mayan calendar, which many people think of Doomsday, December 21st, 2012. Remember the movie about it? The Hebrew calendar, which was created in Israel and known to be based on mathematics and still used for Jewish religious observations. The Julian calendar, the Chinese calendar, the Roman calendar, and much more. The calendar is the system of organizing days done by giving names of periods of time, days, weeks, months, and years. It is very convenient for regulating our life, religious observances, and for historical and scientific use or purposes. The first to use the calendars of the Sumerians in Mesopotamia. During the Bronze Age, its month on their calendar had 29 or 30 days, depending on whether or not the first day had a full moon. This was followed by the Egyptian, Assyrian, and Elamite and then Davidic India. Alison Eldridge of the Britannica published the seven crazy facts about calendars, and these are quite interesting, and here it goes. Number one, the Devil's Calendar, the Gregorian Calendar. This is widely used today, named after Pope Gregory XIII to introduce it. It was met with skepticism from Protestants of largely Protestant countries, some of whom believe that the calendar was the work of the Antichrist, or at least an attempt to bring them back under the Pope's rule. It was adopted initially in 1582 by several Roman Catholic countries in Europe and spread to most of the world very gradually thereafter. The United States adopted this calendar in 1752, and the last country that adopted the diabolical calendar was Greece in 1923. Number 2. One Size Fits All Calendar we all know that Earth is moving around the Sun, Earth rotating on its axis, other planets influencing the orbit of the Earth, the solar system moving around the galaxy, and so on. It's pretty much impossible to come up with a one-size-fits-all calendar that can be used by everyone around the world. Most calendars use what are called intercalary days or even months that bring them in line with the tropical year the time it takes Earth to complete its orbit of the Sun. Lunar calendars, which are used in many countries especially, in Asia, require a third month to be added every few years. The Mayan calendar had five intercalary days that were said to be unlucky and were observed with fasting and sacrifices. Number three, months names. Who named the months of the year? We have undoubtedly been reciting the Gregorian months of the year since even before you could tie your shoes. But did you ever stop to think about how these do not match up at all? The first Eight months are named after various gods, goddesses, festivals, and rulers. For instance, January or Januarius is named for Janus, the god of doorways and beginnings. February or Februarius is named for Pervroa, a feast of purification. September, on the other hand, literally means seventh month. October, likewise, means eighth month. And I'm sure you can see where this is going for November and December. This would be awesome and super easy to remember if those were the 9th, 10th, and 11th, and 12th months, respectively. So what happened? The original Roman calendar is said to have been invented by the first king of Rome, King Romulus, had 10 months. It started with March, that's when winter ended and armies battled again. It was named after the god of wars, Mars or Martius. Later, Roman ruler Numa Pompilus added January at the beginning and February at the end of the calendar. Eventually, February was moved between January and March. Number 4. Leap years. The Gregorian calendar requires a leap day, February 29, to be added every four years. This happens so that the calendar will match up with the tropical year, which is actually closer to 365 and one four days. However, that in itself, it is not enough, and over time, it leads to some creeping days. So, leap years happen during years that are divisible by four unless they are divisible by 100. In its case, they also need to be divisible by 400 using the system. The years 1900, 2100, and 2200s are not leap years, but 1600, 2000, and 2400s are. Number five, February 30. We always make fun of February 30th. If you wanted to avoid somebody, set your date for February 30. In the Gregorian calendar, all of the months have 30 or 31 days, except February, which has 28 or 29 in a leap year. When the Swedish were changing from the Julian calendar to the Gregorian, they ended up with a February 30. Most countries in making the switch sacrificed a whole row of days. The Swedish plan was to make the change gradually by omitting leap days for 40 years, but ended up being implemented incorrectly because of the Great Northern War. 
In 1712, the Swedes decided to restore the Julian calendar by adding the leap days they had taken out, and they ended up with 28 plus 2 days in February. Several decades later, the Swedish converted to the Gregorian calendar in the usual day by taking out the last 11 days of February 1753. Number 6. Starting the day right. Today we all agree that a new day starts at midnight, right? But is that really the best way? For thousands of years, astronomers counted the day from noon to noon. Hindus and Egyptians mark a new day at dawn, but Babylonians, Jews, and Greeks started at sunset. Many people still measure by using these milestones for religious or cultural reasons. Number 7. 8 days of a week. We love the weekend, or I do. A seven-day week corresponds to about a quarter of a moon cycle, so it has been a feature of many calendars throughout history. However, the moon isn't the only way to count days. The French Republican calendar, which was intended to be a secular replacement for the Pope-sponsored Gregorian calendar, had 10-day divisions called decades. The early Romans set the week as the eight-day cycle between market days. Some calendars didn't bother with weeks at all. I don't know about you, but I do. I love my weekends. Now, this video is made for educational purposes only. Honda Public Library does not own this article or photo share. Thank you all for watching and see you next month for more interesting topics. Goodbye.